What's up guys, Rush here and welcome to All About Climate. Today we'll be covering some climate science basics and learning how these five things make up the climate system. Watch on to find out more. As climate records continue to fall at a worryingly fast pace, coverage of climate science in the media is finally starting to align with science. Outsiders remain deeply skeptical about the climate scam, which in reality is just an excuse for greedy renewables investors to carry on ripping off the taxpayer, while the poorest and most vulnerable in our communities get shafted. Never mind. Anyway, Climate science, like all sciences, is full of potentially confusing jargon. So today, I thought we'd go over one of the most common terms used in climate science, the climate system. This is a term I've used many times in my videos, but I've rarely paused to define it. So what is it? Well, first of all, it's worth defining what we mean by climate. Climate simply refers to the long-term average of weather, and weather describes the atmospheric conditions at a given time and place. Temperature, cloud cover, wind speed, rainfall, these are constantly changing hour by hour and day by day. Climate, on the other hand, is a description of these conditions when averaged over a long period of time, normally a minimum of 30 years. If weather tells you what clothes to wear each day, climate tells you what type of clothes you need in your closet. So that's the climate, but what is the climate system and how is it different? Well, in order to understand this, it helps to think of the climate in terms of energy. Whether it's rainfall, cloud cover, air temperature or wind speed, weather, and by extension the climate, are expressions of the movement of energy through the atmosphere, and ultimately, all that energy comes from the sun. If you live in the UK, most of the time it's hard to tell if the sun's even there, but I promise you it's working away in the background, providing the heat which evaporates the water which forms the clouds and rain which perpetually cover the British skies. But while both weather and climate are confined to the atmosphere, the energy which drives them is not. In addition to the atmosphere, there are four other parts of our Earth through which this energy moves, and together they create our climate. Air, water, ice rock and life. These five parts of our planet make up the climate system. So let's start with air, the atmosphere. As we've just seen, this is where both weather and climate occurs, and it's nearly entirely composed of gases, the most important of which, at least as far as the climate is concerned, are the greenhouse gases, which control the amount of energy retained by the atmosphere. But the atmosphere also contains ice crystals and water droplets which make up clouds, as well as tiny, dust-like particles called aerosols. These are also important for the climate, since both clouds and aerosols can reflect sunlight into space, and the former can trap heat. These gases, ice crystals and water droplets are constantly in motion as vast amounts of energy is transferred above us. Normally, the only time we're aware of this movement is when the wind blows, but if you've ever seen a tropical storm, either first-hand or on the news, you'll have witnessed the massive amount of energy that the atmosphere can carry. Indeed, tropical storms can release the equivalent of thousands of atomic bombs of energy over their lifetimes, levelling cities and dropping huge quantities of water from the sky. And that brings us on to the second component of the climate system, water or, to use its scientific term, the hydrosphere. This includes all the world's oceans, lakes, rivers, swimming pools and bath water. Now, obviously, the oceans make up the main component here, accounting as they do for 70% of the Earth's surface and 97% of the world's water, though judging by my water bills, my house comes a close second. The oceans can exchange gases with the atmosphere and store a huge amount of energy. Just think how even a small wave can knock you off your feet, and then imagine how much more energy is stored in all that water moving around our planet. Oceans are also the primary source for most of the rain that keeps those of us here in the UK in a perpetual state of sarcasm and self-loathing. The next component is closely related to the last, ice. This part of the climate system is called the cryosphere, and it's comprised of 33 million cubic kilometres of ice, which would make one heck of an ice cube, or a really big mojito. The energy involved in the melting and freezing of ice, and the exchange of water with both the hydrosphere and the atmosphere, are important functions of the climate system, and the bright surface of both ice and snow plays an important role in reflecting solar energy into space, second only to the blinding surface of Jeff Bezos's massive head. Next up we have rock, the lithosphere. 
Unsurprisingly, the most important part of the lithosphere to the climate system is the land surface. The type of rock that the surface is made of determines how well it will absorb and transfer heat to the rest of the climate system. The shape of the land, the hills, valleys and mountains, also plays an important role through its ability to change how the atmosphere circulates. For example, the Himalayas create the movement of air responsible for the Asian monsoon. The lithosphere can also affect the composition of the atmosphere by spewing gases out of volcanoes and by chemically reacting with rainwater to suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And that brings us to the final component, life, or to use its scientific name, the biosphere. This part of the climate system incorporates all living things, from an ant to a blue whale, from a salad leaf to a palm tree, and from a bacterium to Jeff Bezos and his massive shiny head. Compared to the oceans and atmosphere, the energy contained and transported within the biosphere is tiny. And yet, we are all a part of this energy transfer. Every second that you are alive, you use energy that you got from your food. And unless your food came from another galaxy, your lunch originally got that energy from the sun, either via photosynthesis if it was a plant, or by eating a plant itself. So before you turn your nose up at solar energy, just remember that you are technically solar powered. But anyway, small though its energy may be, the biosphere still plays an important role in the climate system. Life forms release both heat and water into the atmosphere via respiration and transpiration respectively. They can also affect the composition of the atmosphere by absorbing and releasing gases, including greenhouse gases like methane and CO2. And on geological timescales, life, or more specifically death, plays an important role in taking carbon out of the atmosphere and transferring it into rocks when dead life forms are buried in the ground. Chalk and coal, for example, are both rocks which are formed in part from the carbon trapped in living things. So with the biosphere covered, we now have all five components of the climate system. So I hope that's cleared things up. While both weather and climate describe the atmospheric conditions on short and long time scales respectively, the climate system goes beyond the atmosphere to describe the five parts of our planet which exchange the sun's energy to create the climate. And with that, we've pretty much summed up the video. I hope you've enjoyed watching, and if you want to see more of my content then don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and show your appreciation with a like and a comment. I always try to respond as long as they're not abusive. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.